What's up guys? Welcome to Ride the Bean. A lot of you guys have been asking me how to brew the perfect cup of coffee. So today I thought I would show you how I like to make my coffee when I'm out hiking and camping and whatever. And I'll give you a few brewing tips. Just a few things to consider when you're making coffee to achieve the best results. My favorite method of brewing coffee is the good old traditional cowboy coffee or kuke kaffe as we say in Norwegian, boiling coffee. It is a very old and traditional way of making coffee and it's still the best way in my opinion. So when making coffee there are especially two things to, to keep in mind and that's the freshness of the bean and the grind size. Coffee should be seen as any other fresh produce in a way. The fresher it is, the better it tastes. Ideally, you should wait about one week to let the coffee degas after roasting so that it doesn't taste burnt or roasty. But between one and six weeks or so, that's where the coffee tastes optimal, tastes the best. Of course, it's going to taste good way after that as well, but uh, it slowly starts losing its flavor over time. So if you want the best possible result from your coffee, you should drink it between one and six weeks after the roast date. And of course, based on the brewing method that you're using, you also need to consider the grind size. So for espresso, for example, which is brewed under pressure and over a short period of time, just uh, 20 seconds, 30 seconds, you want very, very fine grinds because the water has very little contact with the, the coffee. So you want to extract a lot more flavor in a shorter period of time. And to do that, you need to grind it very fine. Cookie coffee or cowboy coffee is on the exact opposite side of the scale. You want to grind it much, much, much coarser. Because for this type of brew, the coffee and the water are in contact all the time. And if you grind it fine, you risk over extracting. And then the coffee will taste very bitter. You can think of it this way. You can put sand in one glass and rocks in the other. And then you pour water over it. Which glass will the water reach the bottom first? That's the one with the rocks in, right? Because the particles are bigger, so the water runs quicker through it. And here we have an example of the grind size for cookie coffee, filter coffee, and espresso. What I'm looking for in a good cup of coffee is a balance. I want the sweetness, the acidity, the bitterness, and all that to be balanced. I don't want one thing to overpower anything else. And you can think of it this way, if the coffee tastes a bit sour, that might mean it's under extracted. It has had too little contact with water and not enough of the coffee flavors have been extracted from the, the beans. And if it tastes bitter, it has had too much contact with water and is over extracted. That means you've extracted too much out of the coffee and you start getting these oils and all in the, the bitter tastes in the coffee. If you have that in the back of your mind when brewing, everything else is very simple. This is all I need to make a great cup of cookie coffee or cowboy coffee. Uh, of course you don't need a scale but I prefer to, to use a scale for accuracy. And you need coffee beans. Ideally, you want to grind it fresh, like I said, so bring a grinder with you. This is the Kommandante grinder, it's a German grinder. And in my opinion, it is by far the best hand grinder in the world. And I bring this with me everywhere I go. And then of course, you need a coffee pot. Ideally, I prefer to make cowboy coffee on a bonfire, but uh, since I'm here today, it's a bit tricky. Uh, but let's pretend that we have a bonfire in front of us. A good rule of thumb for most methods of brewing is 6 grams of coffee per deciliter of water, or 60 grams per liter. So I guess it is time to start brewing coffee. Let me put some water on and I will show you how I make my coffee. So first, let's do the grinding dance. This is what I always do to keep warm while I'm out camping. Because usually I'm freezing cold in the morning and I need to start getting some warmth in there. Ah. Right, now we have the coffee ground. Ah, it's 
smells amazing. There we go. We have water. So that's one liter and 60 grams of coffee. For this type of brew, you ideally want to stretch it out a little bit longer. So I like to brew for about eight to 10 minutes. That's because the coffee is ground pretty coarse. So I want to let, uh, let it extract as much flavor as, as possible without over extracting it. If you grind it finer, you can cut down the time, but you also risk over extracting it. So all you do is just pour the coffee in like that. And then just use your finger or a stick to just uh, make sure all the coffee is wet. Like that. Put the lid back on and wait for eight minutes. And then I'll show you my favorite part of the brewing process. So while we wait for the coffee to finish, uh, let's talk a little bit about what coffee actually is. Most of you probably know this already. Coffee is uh, a fruit, same family as a tomato, watermelon, banana. So in my opinion, coffee should taste fruity. Of course, flavors or what people like are different for everyone. And there are no set answers, of course, nothing is wrong. But what I find fascinating about coffee is that one product can taste so many different things. And to be able to taste all these different things, you need to roast the coffee pretty light, relatively light. Because if you roast it too dark, you only get the burnt flavors, like the, the caramelization and the, 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 the dark roasted flavors. I don't like the roastiness or the bitterness in the coffee. I don't want my coffee to taste bitter at all. If there's bitterness in it, there's something off with it. Most people drink coffee for the caffeine. They want something to wake them up in the morning or help them get through something or whatever. Uh, I don't really react to caffeine at all, so I don't drink coffee for, for that reason. I only drink it because I like the taste of it and I, I enjoy having a cup of coffee in moments when meeting people or enjoying a beautiful view. That's when I enjoy a cup of coffee the most. Contrary to what most people actually think, dark roasted coffee has less caffeine than light roasted coffee. As the roasting process goes on, some of the caffeine evaporates from the bean. And so dark roasted coffee, even though it tastes stronger, has less caffeine. So it actually wakes you up less, it just gives you more stomach issues. So now I think our coffee is ready. This is my favorite part of the whole brewing process the knock. Just take a stick or something and just give it a couple of knocks. I love that. Just look at that crust breaking up and you smell the aroma coming out of the, the pot. It smells amazing. Now all you do is just uh, wait for like a half a minute, minutes, and then you are ready to pour yourself a great, great cup of coffee. So what happened now when I gave the, the pot a, a knock was that I broke the crust on the top uh, and that stopped the brewing process in a way. And then the grounds are falling to the, to the bottom of the pot. And now I am ready to pour a great, clear, beautiful, juicy cup of coffee. So what you have to remember now is that you just have to pour carefully to avoid getting all the grounds back in the coffee. Because if you now stir it, everything is gonna come out all at once. So just like this. Have a beautiful cup of coffee. So this was the fruity bean from Uganda. Mm. I love this coffee. It tastes of uh, like red berries, cherries. Super fruity, super nice. So that was basically it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and maybe you learned something. Next time you're out camping or hiking or whatever, just. Uh, Try this method out and let me know what you think. Leave a comment down below. 
and uh, I will see you in the next episode. Peace out.